Hi and welcome to this iOS video. In this video we're going to talk about a little bit about automatic reference counting. Uh, what reference counting really kind of is and we're going to start talking about it now and continue our discussion really of reference counting and memory management throughout the course. But I wanted to expose you to a couple ideas and also talk about what happens when we want to make a property out of an object. Uh, so far we've used C primitive types, car and int, to make our properties. Uh, today we're going to uh, rework the part class to use an NS string instead of a car star for the name. And this is really what we want to do. Uh, in Objective C, we want to use these uh, next step or NS objects uh, rather than car stars and things like that. So now, one thing, since we've only been dealing with C primitives, we've used the assign keyword in the property declaration. Now assign just uh, says when you have a setter, when synthesize makes the setter, just assign the new value to the, uh, to the property rather than doing anything else. Now there are a couple other keywords that we use when we're making properties out of objects. So the first thing we're going to do is change this car star property declaration to an NS string. And then we're going to move this pointer, and it really doesn't matter, but just for, uh, just because it's kind of syntactically correct in Objective-C, we're going to move it to the name of the object. So we have, now we have an NS string property called name. The problem here is that when name gets reassigned, what does it do with the old object? NS string and a lot of these NS objects are what we call immutable. They cannot be changed. So what will happen is if we just assign a new NS string, to name, it doesn't know what to do with the old version because these are immutable. So we need to tell it what to do. And in order to do that, we need to peek a little bit into the subject of reference counting. When an object is made a property out of and when it is uh, assigned for the first time, it is born with a reference count. A reference count is just a counter and it counts from zero on up one two three and so forth when that reference count reaches zero again that object will be deleted and this is how reference counting works uh, rather than having garbage collection that goes out and looks for any objects that are nil objective c has reference counting now prior to ios version 5 <clears throat> we had to manage this reference count by ourselves and we had keywords we had we had message messages that were sent to any subclass of ns object uh that were that were things like release uh auto release and things like that that would that would manage that enabled us to manage the reference count on objects now we are using automatic reference counting now Automatic reference counting does a real good job of doing this for you. The bottom line here is that if this object wants to be, if you want this object to start with a reference count of one, then instead of using a sign, you use the word strong. Now, this NS string at this point will be born, so to speak, with a reference count of one. Why does that matter? Well, if it's born with a reference count of zero, the next time through the loop, so to speak, uh, automatic reference counting will deallocate the memory, free the memory for that object. So if our application, at the application level, needs to know about this object and needs to retain this object, then we use the keyword strong. And in this case, we do need that. 
Now, if this object were going to be made, uh, if this object were going to be added to, let's say, an NS array of strings later, at some point, then we could use the keyword weak. In that case, name, the NS string, would be born with a reference count of zero. So weak means zero, strong means one. And then when we added it to the array, let's say, or whatever collection we were going to add it to, at that point, because another object has a reference to the name, it would have a reference count of one. If we had made that strong, it would be born with a reference count of one. When we add it to the array, it would have a reference count of two. Later, when the array gets deleted, the object name would have a reference count of one and might never get deleted. So, if it's going to be immediately added to another object, we would make it weak. If it's not going to be, as is the case here, we make it strong. There's this is almost an oversimplification, but really that's that's about as that's about as difficult as strong and weak really get. So really, when do we use weak? Uh, when we get into using view controllers and we're dealing with programming iOS applications with iPhones and iPads and we have views and things like that, typically, and this is a preview, typically we use strong if the the object is either like an NS string or an NS array or something like that that we are going to use within our application and want to retain but we use weak for any subview of the main view that will be immediately attached to the main view now I'll go over that again and we're going to talk about that when we get to the subject of view controllers and their views and those views subviews and we'll talk about what should be strong and what should be weak at that point again. So don't worry. But this is kind of a preview into how that works. Now, because we have made this an NS string, then we need to make this parameter an NS string, right? Because we want to init with an NS string. We could actually init with a car star, but. And then this is the kind of syntax that we use an NS string pointer uh, called part name. Okay, and then here we need to change this as well. Notice that synthesis still works. Name still works just fine. Uh, name now is an NS string. And when we assign, since, NS, since part name is an NS string, the assignment is just fine. And what this will do is, since NS string is immutable, and since it has been declared to be strong, what happens under the hood is in the setter, the old version of in a, that of name, of self.name, will be released. Then the new version will be assigned into self.name, and then it'll have a reference count of one again. So the old version gets released, it has a reference count of zero, the assignment happens, it has a reference count of one. And this all happens behind the scenes. Very rarely, with automatic reference counting, do we have to get in and fiddle with the reference counts and make sure that everything happened. In fact, those keywords that manage that, like auto-release and release and, and that kind of thing, those keywords are gone. So if you use ARC, if you use automatic reference counting, uh, it's, it's 98.5% of the time, let's say, you never have to worry about memory management. But there are some cases where you do, and it always pays to know what's going on here. So now, this method, our init method, will work just fine. So now in main, when we, when we want to call that method, let's say we're going to part my widget, let's call it my widget up oh, and it's still a pointer and now how do we do this well the first part's easy enough part alec right and then whoops wrong way and then init 
with and let's see what did we call that unit with name we'll just grab that unit with name and number part alec actually there's even a better way watch this if we import part which we should remember to do we'll get it as a tooltip now because this is an ns string we need to use the string or the objectify deal of and let's call it widget again and then the number uh, why mess with perfection I guess 36 okay now there's another thing that is kind of a neat tool if you have a lot of parameters and your your method name is uh, is split up over a lot of parameters if you hit enter it will align the colons for you and so this can be nice when you have a nice long method name with many parameters so now that will work and then all we have to do is get out the information uh, so let's just say uh, printf or even in its log but printf doesn't give us all that other information and then string uh, digit um, my widget dot name my widget dot number okay this won't work <clears throat> and it's telling us it's not going to work this is a bad format specifier for an ns string remember my widget dot name now is an ns string not a this so it's telling us the format specifies type car star but the argument has type in a string that's just what I said only it says it better than I did so the way to get this is either to use the UTF-8 string which I think we'll just go ahead since we're doing a printf here remember from an NS string if we want a car star we can get that by using UTF-8 string like that and that'll give us that that'll give us this as a as a percent s and there we go that works or the other way to do this is to use ns log which will give us a lot of extra information that we may or may not want we'll put a new line here and then here we would say ns log wants an ns string it also takes format specifiers but we begin with an ns string and then we use percent at and this says give me the description of the object that I'm about to pass and then D and then a new line and that we can use my widget whoops my widget dot name directly because it, my widget dot name is an NS string and then my widget dot number all right, and get rid of that one. So this will print out the same information twice, essentially. Remember, with NS log though, you're going to get the extra information uh, of the log time, uh, the address in the strong week, and so forth. So widget 36, widget 36. The difference is that here we are NS logging with an NS string that is a format string. Here we are printing with a car star string that's our format string and the percent s format specifier doesn't work for an ns string we need to use ns log with the percent at format specifier thank you